The ocean doesn't knock before it comes. It doesn't roar. It doesn't announce itself. It creeps in under the cover of night, filling streets, creeping into homes, creeping into lives. Places you thought would last forever, schools, markets, your childhood home, now face a silent, unstoppable invasion. And in the Philippines, the clock is ticking faster than most realize. Global sea levels are rising by 3.7 millimeters every year, according to the IPCC. In the Philippines, the pace is even faster. Some areas see water climbing by up to 7 millimeters annually, reports Pagasa. Combine that with sinking land, constant coastal erosion, and stronger storm surges fueled by climate change. And the threat escalates exponentially. By 2030, studies warn repeated flooding could force millions of Filipinos from their coastal homes, from Manila to Cebu, Davao to Tacloban. Today, we count down the 10 Philippine cities most at risk of severe recurring floods by 2030. Stay with us until the end, because what you are about to see is not just numbers or maps. It is cities, families, and lives on the edge of disappearing, and the top 10 most at-risk cities might shock you. Number 10. Manila. The country's capital, the bustling heart of the Philippines, is also one of its most fragile. Pagasa data shows sea levels in Manila Bay rising 13 millimeters per year since the 1960s, far above the global norm. But that is not all. The city itself is sinking in places like Ermita and Malate by up to 10 centimeters per year because of overpumping groundwater. The IPCC projects that by 2030, a 10-year flood event could submerge 87% of Manila, over 37 square kilometers, affecting 1.54 million residents and $39 billion in GDP. The signs are already visible. Shoreline erosion has swallowed parts of Luneta Park and Super Typhoon Uwan in 2025 was an early warning of the floods yet to come. Manila fights back with seawalls and early warning systems, but even routine high tides may soon force weekly evacuations. The city's pulse is strong, but for how long can it fight the rising tide? Number 9. Navotas Metro Manila's fishing hub, home to 250,000 residents living along a maze of waterways and floating docks, is under siege from the tide. Land subsidence reaches 6 to 8 centimeters per year and it is paired with five millimeters of sea level rise annually. By 2030, storm surges could flood 40% of Navotas during a 10-year event, affecting more than 100,000 people in barangays like San Roque and Tango. Coastline erosion has already eaten 20 meters of shoreline, swallowing fish pens and forcing relocations. Generations of fishing traditions hang in the balance. The city adapts with floating homes, sandbag levees, and community-driven flood mitigation. But the question looms, will Navitas survive or fade into memory beneath Manila Bay? Number 8. Malabon Known as the Venice of the Philippines, Malabon is home to 380,000 residents living along a 20-kilometer network of rivers and esteros. River festivals, street food, and vibrant community life now share space with an unstoppable foe water. Land subsides by 5 centimeters per year, while coastal erosion claims 1 meter of shoreline annually. By 2030, 35% of Malabon could flood during storm surges, affecting 150,000 residents and threatening $2 billion in local commerce. Past typhoons brought surges of up to 5 meters. Soon, sunny day flooding could be the norm. Communities improvise with rafts, sandbags, elevated walkways, and wetland restoration. But as the water encroaches, will this floating paradise endure or merge fully with Manila Bay? Number 7. Roxas City The seafood capital of Capiz, home to 170,000 people, lies along the Panay Gulf. Sea level is rising 4.5 millimeters per year, with 3 centimeters of subsidence caused by aquaculture pumping. By 2030, 25% of coastal areas, including Kage and Lanoi, could flood during 10-year storms, displacing 40,000 residents and causing $500 million in fisheries losses. In October 2025, Tropical Storm Fengshan devastated Roxas City 
flooding streets, submerging homes, and claiming lives. Erosion has eaten 15 meters of shoreline in five years, threatening landmarks like Roxas Cathedral. Communities fight back with mangrove replanting, seawalls, and local resilience projects. But the looming question remains, can Roxas City sustain its seafood heritage, or will it be forced to retreat inland? Number 6. San Jose, Antique A coastal gem on Panay's southwest shore, home to 150,000 people, San Jose faces rising seas at 5 millimeters per year, paired with 4 centimeters of land subsidence from groundwater extraction. By 2030, 30% of the municipality could flood during storm surges, impacting 50,000 people and threatening $300 million in rice fields, ports, and infrastructure. Past typhoons like Tino in 2025 brought surges up to three meters, reshaping the coastline. Erosion strips two meters of shore each year, salinizing soils and displacing communities. Local efforts focus on elevating homes, restoring coral reefs, and planting mangroves as buffers. San Jose's story is a lesson in resilience. Adaptation is not optional, it is survival. Number five, Cotabato City, Mindanao's Delta City, home to 300,000 residents, faces a double-edged threat, fertile lands prone to flooding. Sea levels rise four and a half millimeters per year, and that combines with three to five centimeters of land subsidence. By 2030, 28% of Delta areas could flood repeatedly, affecting 80,000 people and causing $400 million in trade losses. Erosion eats 10 meters of riverbank every year, threatening historic sites like the Kudawat Mosque. Local communities reinforce dikes and plant flood-resistant crops, preserving culture and livelihoods. Cotabato's multicultural heart beats on, but the water keeps rising. Number four, Cebu City. The Queen City of the South, home to one million people, faces sea level rise averaging five millimeters per year, with two centimeters of subsidence in some areas. By 2030, 20% of coastal zones, including Mandau, could flood, displacing 200,000 residents and causing $10 billion in logistics losses. In 2025, Typhoon Kalmegi flooded rivers and towns, forcing people onto rooftops as water rose swiftly. Cebu invests in elevated infrastructure and artificial reefs, yet the question lingers. Will innovation crown the city safe, or will it lose its watery throne to the rising sea? Number three, Iloilo City. Home to 450,000 residents, Iloilo lies amidst rivers and mangroves on Panay's southeastern coast. Land subsides four centimeters per year, with sea level rising four and a half millimeters annually. By 2030, 32% of the city could flood, threatening barangays like Jaro and $140 million in urban assets. Historic Molo mansions face brackish water, bakeries risk closure, and centuries-old streets could vanish temporarily underwater. Smart seawalls at Irv's and urban forests provide hope but surges grow stronger each year, testing the city's pulse. Number two, Legazi Pi City, at the foot of Mayon Volcano along the Albe Gulf, 210,000 residents live under a constant shadow. Sea levels rise five millimeters per year with two and a half centimeters of subsidence. By 2030, 25% of coastal areas could flood, putting 50,000 people at risk and causing $1.5 billion in damages. The city fights back with seawalls and early warning systems. Overseas Filipinos have pitched in to fund resilience projects. Will Legazpi endure or retreat uphill as the ocean encroaches? Number one, Tecloban City. On Leyte's eastern shore, 250,000 residents live where land meets sea. Sea levels are rising seven millimeters per year and the land is subsiding three centimeters. By 2030, 40% of the waterfront could flood regularly, causing $100 million in losses. Storm surges are intensifying and erosion claims 20 meters of coastline each year. Communities rebuild with mangroves, elevated homes, and a resilient spirit. Tacloban shows the Bayanihan spirit, but will it remain safe by 2030, or will the sea claim its shores entirely? 10 Cities 
10 stories. Sea level rise, land subsidence, erosion, and storm surges converge by 2030. The Philippines has 36,000 kilometers of coastline, losing 20 square kilometers each year to erosion. By mid-century, 13 million coastal Filipinos could face forced migration to higher ground. Solutions exist. Mangrove restoration, climate smart urban planning, elevated housing, and stricter groundwater management can reduce harm. Communities, local governments, and overseas support can make a difference. This isn't just about sinking cities. It's about Filipinos rising together, navigating a world where water is both a lifeline and a threat. As you watch these cities face the tides, one question remains, stay or relocate? Sharing this knowledge is the first step. The ocean is rising. Will humanity rise with it?